Hi, this is Tech Tips with Brittany Smith from Devise and Conquer Coaching. We're going to be looking at real data, how you actually use your phone, not just how you feel like you use it. The first and oldest way to get a metric of how you're using your device is maybe from an unexpected place. It's your battery usage. If you go into settings and scroll down to battery, there are a few different interesting options. But one of the things you can look at is your usage for the last 24 hours. Before you judge, this is my real iPad and it is Halloween season and I love The Simpsons. You can see right away that Simpsons Tapped Out has been using most of my battery. That's not necessarily because it's the only app I've been using, but games do suck down your battery. So if you want a little bit more detail, tap on the screen and it's going to say how long it's actually been on the screen. You can see in the last 24 hours, Tapped Out has been on for an hour and 43 minutes. You can also get a feel for what I've been doing for the last 10 days. Under here, you're going to see battery usage and activity. Mostly these are lining up on my graph here. There is another place that has a little bit of information on which apps you've been using more or less. So you go under settings, general, and storage. It is an extra source of information to get an idea of when you've last been using certain apps and how long it's been since you've used them. Next, this is a new feature in iOS 12, which was introduced last year. It's called screen time. You go into settings and go under screen time. And it's designed to help you have a better understanding of how you actually use your device, as well as to add certain restrictions. This is going to show your daily average use and how it compares from week to week. You might have gotten an alert saying how you're using your device that you immediately dismissed, but there's actually a lot of really useful information that can help you decide if you're actually using your devices and spending your time the way you'd like. Under See All Activity, you can get information for the day or for the week, and it'll break it down by categories. You can see which are your most used apps and how long you've been spending on them each day. Yikes, I may want to take a look at that tapped out usage. Pickups. This is interesting. This is, what did you do first when you picked up your device? This is especially useful for those really habit-forming apps that you kind of wish you'd spend less time on. Are you automatically going to it as soon as you pick up your device? And then you can also look at your notifications. What are you getting notified by the most? And how are you interacting with that? I mostly don't allow notifications on my iPad, so there's only one app that's notified me today. My phone is a different story. If you're noticing that a lot of your pickups and a lot of your notifications are coming from an app you'd rather be spending less time in, it's time to look at some of those habits. I'll have a couple of other videos that'll be linked below. One is on reducing your notifications, and the other one is on building better habits around distracting apps, maybe moving them to a location where they're a little bit harder to find. Downtime is an option where for certain hours in the day, usually while you're asleep, getting into bed, maybe in the morning, your device will restrict which apps you have access to. If you are using downtime, I recommend a time before you plan to be going to bed if you're the kind of person who ends up going down texting rabbit holes when it gets late at night and going until you can get away with it in the morning. For me, it's usually a little bit after I'll be awake so I can be moving and a little bit less rabbit holey. Downtime is not currently on on my iPad, although I do have it on sometimes. My phone, it's almost always on. Something else to keep in mind if you are using downtime is generally websites are blocked. If that's not a behavior you like, then you can turn on something like Chrome and use that as your browser. I love it because it means I am severely punished for trying to do any Google searching because it keeps popping up with that annoying message. App limits is an interesting feature because you can set app limits by category of app. You cannot customize these categories or by the specific app itself. Let's say that I'm a little concerned about my tapped out usage. So I'm going to click on games and tapped out. Hit next. There I can say how many hours, how many minutes am I okay with playing per day? We're going to set this to one hour. You can also customize by days. This is really helpful with Pokemon Go, for example. I'm going to have a much more generous option on the weekends where I'm more likely to be participating in a community day or going out raiding with my family. 
Using a screen time passcode, again, I don't on my iPad because it's not the device that I find myself getting distracted by as much, but on my phone, I do have a screen time passcode. It's just enough to let me think a little bit better over whether or not I really need to open that. And then you can pick some apps that are always allowed. This means they're excluded from app limits, but also from downtime. You can see I have quite a few that are involved in my routines. They're the ones that I'm gonna need to use still early in the morning when I'm exercising, or maybe still at night. And I always want access to my calendar. But when it comes right down to it, our memory of how we've been spending our time on our devices is pretty faulty. So anytime we can get something that's a little bit more objective, it's better than nothing. I'll be honest, I was a little appalled to see the tapped out numbers, not gonna lie. Thanks for joining me for getting real data on how you use your devices. Till next time. Oh, this is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> just, just how much tapped out there is. I'm like, wow, I really had important work to be doing.